Hello, and welcome to episode 17, part 1 of Unfettered. Today I am joined by Crispy and Top Hat, as usual, who have decided to stare randomly at different parts of their screen rather than interacting with the stream. Hello, friends. <laughs> I don't know if it's brooding enough. <laughs> All right, You're just you getting into character for, for Albert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Batman. And this would be where Constance goes... Uh, I'm Albert. <laughs> Albert is Batman. Constance is Harley Quinn. For some reason, they have decided to team up. I, I sense an upcoming party conflict. That's what I sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's been about two weeks. We've been kind of stuck in this every other week pattern. Um which hopefully we can get out of, uh, but we'll see. Tonight, um, we're hopefully having a full episode. We've got Crispy a new microphone, so he's sounding crispy and delicious. Um, and I was feeling kind of sick last night, but I'm feeling well enough to play tonight. So, yeah. Uh, Crispy, how have you been? I've been doing pretty good. Yeah. Have you gotten to do anything exciting with your life other than buy a, a headset, or... Have I ever done anything exciting with my life? I mean, no, but I keep trying to ask, just in case, you know? No. Top Hat, how about you? Yeah, there was Thanksgiving, that happened. Oh, yeah. Um, Did we, was that the last time yeah. we played? Was that before Thanksgiving? We didn't play last week, and so, yes. Good point. Um, <laughs> so it's been a while. Thanksgiving happened. That was a fun, awkward mess for myself. And um, oh no. Uh. All right. Hey, you yeah. went to uh, you went to Nerd Fair, right? Didn't you? No. Or did you end up not going? I mean, Ren Fair. Or did you? Not I end did up that, to that ages ago. Was that ages no, no, ago? Didn't work weren't you gonna do it at like charles dickens fair or something yeah dickens oh, fair dickens. And i'm doing other, that other nerd fair sorry <laughs> the friends i'm trying to make plans with are really bad at making plans oh no let me just say really bad <laughs> i've like bugged them multiple times and they're like okay we're thinking this date now and i bug them again they're like oh right we've been talking about that for two weeks and we just haven't said anything to you i'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're like we haven't come to a conclusion I'm like you've been talking for two weeks <laughs> this this is why i don't leave my house is because instead i could just not deal with people moving plans around and live on my computer so All it's right. looking like the 16th so they're aiming for the last weekend possible which is the is most crowded weekend because you're gonna get in so i'm like stuck on the do i buy tickets now Mm -hmm. and actually have a ticket but also risk them not getting tickets or them changing plans or do you wait yourself. for them to just like go okay now we've decided on a date oh wait there aren't any <laughs> and having to buy yeah. scalp tickets yeah I mean I could like the scalp tickets is not going to be the hard part that's I can get discounts I know people working there right but yeah yeah. So, uh, All right. you know, and random midnight runs to burger places with crispy. That's friendship right there. Um, rather than talking about friendship and bad plans, uh, should we destroy plans them. and friendships by playing some Dungeons and Dragons? Hell yeah! All right. Who wants to play Mario Party afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just wrap up with a quick game of Monopoly. <laughs> 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 so three days later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> stole my boardwalk. <laughs> hmm. All right. In character, Dungeons and Dragons. It's a thing that we're playing. Um. Let's see. When we. When we come back to our heroes after leaving them last episode. Um. It's the very early hours of the morning, you know, it's it's less that the, the sun has come up so much as 
the sky above has started to turn blue and lighten. Uh, everything has that dull gray to it in Dun Simic. Um, the city is quiet, you know, maybe the vague sounds of people stirring inside their homes uh, for those that get up early to uh, work with the sun. And the uh, wind carries on it the smells of the desert and not those of a wakeful city. We see Constance walking down the street, um, sort of hands in her pockets, uh, collar of her coat up to keep her warm. Um, and she appears to be sort of wandering somewhat aimlessly. Um, Constance, uh, where, where are you going? Or what part of the city do we find you in? Oh God, so it's early morning and I'm just wandering around. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is kind of just a more ruined area, mm -hmm. like a redevelopment, so broken buildings, kind of people in this, like, more people, like, in the streets kind of area. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, um, we see Constance walking down the street, uh, maybe a couple beggars, asking for coin um, and she uh, turns the corner and the street is empty except for um, a small sort of uh, elvish figure wearing um, imperial armor um, who has their has their back to Constance, so we can't quite see their face. And they're bent over the form of a green drake um, that's sort of lying limp in the center of the street. Constance, what do you do? Uh, walk towards it with, like, hand on the pommel of my sword. Uh, as you walk closer, um, you can tell that the, the figure is crying. You can see their shoulders shaking. Um, and as you, you know, sort of move around the side, you can see a pool of blood um, has gathered in the, in the street. And you can, you can smell it. You can smell uh, the scent of death wafting toward you. I think if this is like the, the pace is going to pick up and... You like walk quickly over? Yeah. Um, and as you, you know, come upon the figure and sort of like keep a little bit of distance to move around to, to where you can see them, um, she looks up and it's you, it's Constance. Um, and the drake that she's holding is yours. And um, like we see Constance recoil in surprise briefly and looking around uh you're not in dun Simic. you're in Dunterra. um you can see the blasted out hollows of buildings uh you can hear people screaming um and and fires raging in the distance uh and you're just kneeling there looking up to the sky tears running down your face and asking, why? Why now? Why now? And then you wake up in the O'Dare's uh, workshop. You'd fallen asleep at their uh, work table. There's a blanket around your shoulders. What do you do? Uh, I think at that point, like, there's going to be the look out the window to see if there's a sun yet kind of yeah it's it's that same early morning um gray i think just pull the blanket over my head and just no 10 more hours <laughs> yeah um I, I think you say 10 more hours and we see uh mabel is like asleep on a couch maybe in the 
adjoining room and she like shifts and we see her open an eye and look out the window and we follow her gaze right our camera goes out the window and out into the city um and we come upon albert uh and albert you've been up all night if i remember correctly um yeah where do we find you what are you up to literally reading through records I've been trying to find out who recently transferred in and like cross examining that with the list of people who we know were in Constance or not Constance Clementine's cult. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's really just kind of like throwing himself into the work and not really thinking about much else. Um, So very tired and dead looking and like the, uh, the basement of the guardhouse, probably something along those lines. Okay. Um, so you're, you're just sifting through files, um, and what you're discovering as you go through this is that, uh, section of the, um, like an entire month or two of the records are missing. Mm -hmm. Wow. And let me guess, it was really close to the modern, like, the current time? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's around it basically the two months leading up to the um, event in Dunsimic. All right. Um, so all, all the records. So I, I don't really have a good idea of like how many people were in guard before uh, the events of Dunsimic. How many people had transferred away? Um, yeah, you've got a reasonable idea. Um, since it's a city of <laughs> You know, maybe a couple thousand people. Um, I would expect there are like the the slow numbers of hundreds of guards. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, what? Okay, so if the records are gone, what I'm gonna get, do is I'm gonna go out and. Um, it, so is it still that kind of early morning, or has the day actually started yet? Yeah, it's it's that it's early morning, gray. Uh, maybe now some of the like first rays of sunlight are peeking out over the rooftops okay because i'm gonna i'm gonna start i'm gonna start investigating into this and talking to people who were part of the guard before you know the events of done simic and we took over and see if they knew anything about you know people who had transferred out like a bunch of people who had been transferred away from done simic mm-hmm. or if a bunch of people transferred into done simic or if both happened at the same time um, okay and that's just kind of like by word of mouth like did you notice that a bunch of people you didn't recognize started joining the city guard? Right, and right, like, right. So you're looking from? for people who were in the guard previously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Um, and if you would like, you may use um, charisma for this. All right. One Character sheet's got to cooperate with me here. Um, let's see. I am not, I'm not trained in investigation, so it's just a charisma roll. Okay. Hey. Twenty three is really good. Uh, yeah, you find um, you find a guard by the name of uh Madru Hafad, um, mm-hmm. who had been working um in the uh in the guard for about a year before the event, um, yeah. and they uh. They are one of the one of the few Genasi actually working in the Dunsimic Guard before um, everything shifted over. Went to shit, basically. Yeah, right, and so, so you uh, you get their address and their post and all that information, and you can you can track them down fairly yeah. easily. Um, all right. Yeah. So I'll do that. Fuck it. Time waits for no one. <laughs> okay. All right. Getting back into the uh the episode hello youtube welcome back uh if you're curious why everything's a little different um there'll be another video going up separately that'll explain everything (laughs) so uh crispy where did you last hear me talking i think you were entering the building i i walked into the building okay yeah uh i did not hear that so the last thing you got from me was saying uh Talking about Madru Hafad, I believe. Yes. Would you get the description of them? 
No. They were an okay. Old guard that was like that yeah. So they're an Earth Genasi. <laughs> Right, right. That's Earth is an Earth Genasi. Um, they're fairly clean cut, you know, short cropped hair, uh, crisp uh-huh. uniform, um, and they're working a desk in one of the um, one of the offices in one of the sort of slums district. Okay. Okay. Here in Dunsimic. So yeah, you walk on in, and, and how do you want to handle that interaction? Um, I'll probably walk up to the desk, you know. Right and proper, you know, full uh, full proper posture. It's not like I haven't pulled an all nighter before. I mean, Jesus, I'm in management. Um, and so, so, so I'll, I'll I'll walk over to the walk over to the desk, um, and like you know, take note. <clears throat> I don't. Um. You are. I forgot the name already. Uh, Officer Hafad. Yes. Officer Hafad. Yes. Um. My apology, Admiral Vessinger. Um, oh, I'm they here. sit up straight. <laughs> what can I do for you today? No, please. At, at ease. I merely have some questions I'd like to ask you regarding the posts of the guard during in the months before the attack. Uh, we've been looking into the issue, and I personally like would, would like to confirm a few details for myself. Is there a chair? Um, yes. Uh, they gesture to, there's like a chair yeah. sitting next to the desk. Yeah, yeah. I Okay, I sit down at the chair next to their desk. Um, <laughs> I am like, kind of lean back a little bit. You know, make myself at ease. So, Officer... H- Hafad. Hafad. <laughs> right. My apologies. Um, during the months that led up uh, the fir- the two month two to three months that led up to the attack, uh, orchestrated by Clementine Derosshire, uh, we've noticed that many of the records have gone missing, uh, specifically regarding employment status, transfers, whatnot. And I've been led to know that you have someone of good moral standing in the guard and are a long-standing member. Uh, so. I came to question you to see if you knew anything about any kind of transfers, large scale, in and out of uh, the city, within the, those that time period. You grace me with too high praise. Um, however, yes, it is true that during the months leading up to what happened, there were many new faces that I did not recognize. I assumed it was just stepping up security after the events perpetrated by Constance Stormheart, uh, Gamzee's Gibble, and yourself. <clears throat> yes, of course. Continue. But thinking back on it, in, indeed, many of these people, many of the administrative staff that the governor, the governor brought on, um... They were faces that I saw covered in blood that night. Okay. This is troubling. Did you overhear- did you happen to hear or notice anything specific about them? Did they seem to come from the same place or were they just- were they just general recruits from Mullen? Uh, go- go ahead and just roll a d20. Just a flat d20. Just a flat d20? Yeah. This is the Super smooth. standard one two dimensional D twenty. This is that uh that luck check of the night. Oh <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> that's really good. That is a fan- that is the best roll you have ever that's so bad. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am I am sorry. Because of um The kind of person that I am, I was not uh, frequently involved in the uh, comings and goings of new... Yes. I understand. Do you, by chance, know anyone who might have known, or people who were in the guard previously who seemed like they they knew people? They lean back in their chair 
and uh, rack their brain. Uh, now that you mention it, now that you mention it, yes, uh, there was a shipping company. I do not recall their name, but uh, they frequently. It, it was the same name that came up uh, when new people came into town. The crest had uh, had a spear on it. A spear. Yes. Can I? Um, I, I, I kind of look away. Uh, look around. Could you possibly draw it out for me, or is was there kind of some kind of name? I'm afraid I do not remember that clearly. Do you recall what they were uh, bringing into the city? Um, as far as goods, no. But many of the new recruits and uh, uh, people c going to work at the mayor's manor okay, came okay. in on these on these ships. And was there? Did they come in a specific class? Were they galleons? Or... I I cannot remember. I am sorry. It's all right. It's all right. I appreciate your your hard work and your how you've been able to help me. And you said that it was rather often in the time leading up for these ships to come in. In indeed, uh, traffic air traffic here increased perhaps threefold. Threefold? It seems like a lot. Indeed, I have not seen that much. Uh, That much of an imperial imperial presence since the war. Mm. Certainly troubling. Well, I thank you for your time, Officer Hassad. Wait, is it Officer? Yeah, yeah, Hafad. Officer Hafad. Hafad. There we go. Officer Hafad. They uh, bow a little bit. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, keep up the good work, and I'm gonna just kind of stride out and head over to the to the docks. All right. Um let's cut over to Constance. Constance, what are you up to? Uh <clears throat> I think there's this this kind of moment of like Constance is like writing something down in like the workshop now like mm -hmm. trying to be helpful but not having the right knowledge for it. Just being like basic like Arcana, like I know the magical layout of this stuff. It's like that doesn't help. We're we're building things. Ooh, I know what that word means. Um, but just kind of sitting there, like, oh, um, and we'd like she just kind of you know sneezes and goes, huh? It's like someone needs help remembering something. Yeah, and it just keeps writing. Um, and uh, I think at some point she's just gonna be like. Well, conclusion. I need to visit some dragons. I hope they don't eat me. Uh, I, I think um, I think Constance says this, right? She like sits up from whatever she was writing and says that. Uh, <laughs> and our, our camera pulls back, and uh, Mabel, Kelly, and Roderick are all like around <laughs> a table talking to each other and completely miss um, what what you say, Constance. Perfect. And again, Constance grabs her coat, puts it on, like, starts just getting ready to go. Like, okay, sword, okay, uh. Hey, do you have, like, um. Four. Three. Three weeks of food on you? Uh, I think, uh, Roderick just, like, gestures up the stairs at where the kitchen is. <laughs> they just got crazy. Constance of beans. goes upstairs. They're like, but two later, she comes down with like just a bag of corn. Yeah, there's like there's like some some dried meat and some bread in there. Next, all right. Uh, am I forgetting anything? Okay. Uh, sword. Not losing you again. All right. Um. Stand there for a second. I guess I should take the Weverne egg, but uh. Oh, uh, Constance. Dear, if if you're going out, would you mind picking up some milk? Oh yeah. Uh, stop for a second. I'll be on that, and I just walk out. Thanks. 
<laughs> and they they like go back to what they're doing. Um, <laughs> Three weeks later, <laughs> where are you going, Constable? I think uh, like the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I was about to just start like I immediately go to find Gamzies. So I'm like ah, no, nope, can't take them. Uh, sit there for a second. I could take Leafo. I look around the city. Well, I could take right here. I just sit there for a second. Just I'm just standing in the middle of the street, like no, no. Yeah, I think we get this um, long shot of uh, like maybe a crane shot from above of. Constance standing in the middle of the street and like people are walking past and like bumping into her and going about their days um, and we get this slow rise of like people chatter um, and then it cuts and we go back to Constance uh, back to her point of view and um, the street is empty and it is nighttime. <clears throat> oh well um uh... That's uh, unusual. I think we need to start walking towards my ship. Like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. just gonna go now. Start walking. Um, I think like as the walking, just like she's not nervous because what what's gonna hurt her? But uh, at the same time, it's like what happened to my day? Was I just? Lost in thought for uh, nine, eight, twelve. Many. What time hours. was it when I left? <laughs> I just kind of kept keep walking, kind of. Yeah. Um. So, uh, so you're walking toward the docks, um, and you, uh, you round a corner, and uh, or you you come to an intersection and standing. Uh, leaning up against one of the buildings is Gamzee's. Um And she's got, like, her arms crossed and her, her chin tucked in. Where are you going? Oh. Uh. I had this idea. I, I have to find out more about everything. I need the library. And, you know, individuals who have been alive long enough to actually see are you are you sure that you want to know it it's about the only thing i care about right now it is the one universal truth that once things are known they cannot be truly forgotten huh. well you have a responsibility here constance Her eyes, like, drift to the sword at your hip. And I can't perform that responsibility if I'm destroying the land that I protect. I see. I suppose there is no stopping you? Is there ever? And with that, um, the sound of chatter comes back, and Constance is standing in the street outside of the uh, the workshop. It is midday. Uh, well, um, I think Constance is like, how far away is the the sky dock from? Uh, not far. I think it's um a couple hours. Um, I went more like distance. Oh, oh, right. Uh, uh, couple light years. Not hours. Hours is wrong. About an hour of walk. So, like, uh, you can teleport there. All right. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I was just like standing in the street, like, why am I walking? And then just lightning bolt, like where Constance was, just a flash of lightning, and then she's sitting on the black sheep. Yeah. There's like that that stock sound effect of a crowd gasping. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, you appear on the ship. Um, Albert, you arrive at the, um, the sky front mm-hmm. around the same time, uh, and you see the, like, bolt of lightning, 
crack down on the black sheep. I don't know what, what she's up to, but I'm gonna go see what the fuck is going on here. <clears throat> Just... <laughs> like, you can already see the ship starts taking off and you start seeing part of the dock going, then, no, no! Constant, Constant Stormheart, stop that ship right now. I'm trying! <laughs> and you just see, like, ropes getting cut off, tying the ship to the, the dock. I remembered to cut them off this time. No, Constance, where are you going? To the dragons! Why? Because if they're like Li Fo, they know what's going on. <sighs> Alright, just go. Alright, I thanks. can't be bothered with this right now. <laughs> it's just like the ship's already like, like, <laughs> off. like Yeah. Uh, I got this. In case you need me, I can be back here in like... A week. Months. Yeah. I know. All right. Maybe less. <laughs> um. So yeah, the I mean the black sheep is fast. It is a fast ship. It'll get you out. Oh, of Oh yeah, it's it's much faster than everything else. So not too too long. It'll it'll get you out of there right quick. I don't think I can pull off something ridiculous. Do I even want to know? I'm wondering if my portal is big enough to fit a small ship through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably not. You'd be able to skip several days if you could do that. Uh, not really, because I'd only uh, be able to do it days, like miles, miles. Yeah, Sorry. at most seven miles a day. I mean, that's 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 speed on your ship. I don't know. Well, I mean, the Draconic Isles are, um, you know. 1,100 miles I don't away. suppose the ship is 5x5. Five five. It's not. It's really not. You, yeah, you could yeah. teleport yourself out over the arcane and then fall. <laughs> well, no, I was going to make a gate. Like, one of my abilities is not just teleport right. a group of people. It's make a gate that endless number of people can walk through. How fast is the black sheep? What's its speed? Uh, 15. So... Uh, I think we said 150 miles 15. Enough. That can't be correct. That takes like that's that would be hours. Three days. Yeah, it take three you days about... of not stopping. Yeah, so it's gonna take you about a week to yeah. get there. Um, I think actually, uh, despite the fact that this will make this a somewhat short video for YouTube, we're coming up on the hour. I think this is a good point for us to take our first break. All right. Um, and we will come back to find out what is to become of Constance and what Albert is going to do without that agent of chaos in his life. <laughs> uh, and we'll be back with that in just a few minutes. So see Albert's you there. Albert's going to be lonely. <laughs>